All right, boys, welcome back to another video. Swaggy here. Today, we're going to be reacting to the Pittsburgh Steelers 13 to 6 victory over the Denver Broncos in week two. Justin Fields 13 to 20 for 117 yards and a touchdown. He did have a 50 plus yard pass to George Pickens that was called back due to an offensive penalty, which was unfortunate. Pickens was working against Sertan. That was a very fun matchup all afternoon, one of the better ones of the week. But you look at Fields, he hasn't been throwing the ball all over the place he did add in of course 27 rushing yards but the biggest thing for fields is that he hasn't been turning the ball over and he hasn't been putting the Steelers in a situation to where they are struggling from him being out there like Kenny Pickett for example was a guy who wasn't giving the Steelers anything he was hurting them and that's why they moved on but for fields yeah he hasn't been lighting it up the Steelers offense hasn't been elite by any means it only has scored one touchdown in these first two games but they're 2-0 and oh. and this is how the Steelers want to play through their defense through their run game don't turn it over don't put our defense in a situation to where all of a sudden you fumble the ball you throw a pick and now they've got the ball in your territory and you know, don't tire them out and we saw the Broncos they had the ball a lot um, especially in the fourth quarter but that's fine because they weren't really doing anything with it and the Steelers defense has just done a phenomenal job they shut down the Falcons in week one and then week two they just give up two field goals against the rookie Bo Nix so shout out to them for that I think it is unfair how a lot of people have been hating on fields saying that oh well the Steelers are winning because of their defense I mean that is true but at the same time they're also winning because fields hasn't been hurting the team and he's only going to get better too we saw some crazy throws from fields some of them just didn't connect some of them did there was a penalty eventually fields is going to get it going with these receivers and the deep ball but for now there's no reason to be airing it out because again you're just putting your team in a situation to where you're hurting them and in week three we're going to see a much different Steelers offense because they're going up against the Los Angeles Chargers a defense that has Khalil Mack and Joey Boza it doesn't get much better than that. They've got um, a very good uh, defense as well, of course. Um, they added in a couple of guys in the interior defensively. They've got Jim Harbaugh. And it's just it's going to be a tough game. It is in Pittsburgh. The Chargers decided to stay on the East Coast after uh, playing the Panthers uh, in, in North Carolina over the weekend. That's going to be a musty game. Two 2-0 two teams, probably going to be low-scoring, defensive-minded. But we're going to have to see the Chargers and the Steelers for once throw the ball more than 20 times. I think Herbert threw like 24 times at the top of my head in week one. I definitely will be watching that game first and foremost in week three. But in terms of this game, I mean, Bo Nix, 246 yards on 35 attempts. Very good job by the Steelers for limiting him, keeping everything in front of them. Uh, there was a big uh, catch and run in this game for, what was it? Uh, I think it was 27 yards. Yeah, I believe it was 27 yards. Uh, there was a 49-yard catch by Josh Reynolds as well. It was a trickery play. It's like a fake end around, and they threw it back to Knicks. And then uh, it was actually Minka Fitzpatrick fell for the fake. But, like, there was a couple of big plays. But overall, Knicks was just not that great in this game. He threw a pick in the red zone. It was picked off by the former seventh-round corner, uh, Corey Trice. I'm recording this at 1 a.m., so bear with me here, man. Uh, first Steelers video of the week uh, coming off that week one win for the Falcons. But um, I just think the thing for Pittsburgh is defensively, and we talked about this coming into the season, they can match up with anyone. You look at their schedule, I don't think they even play um, outside of like the Chiefs. They don't really play an elite offense. I mean, I guess the Texans are going to be a tough team. That is a home game. Kansas City is a home game. I haven't liked what I've seen out of the Ravens offensively so far this season. Philadelphia's looked bad. Cincinnati was pretty solid against the Chiefs in Week 2. They're going to have uh, presumably T. Higgins back for that game. Buffalo, I guess. Uh, well, Buffalo, they don't play them. Actually, that was a preseason game. So, yeah, this is just not the hardest schedule in the world for the Steelers. I mean, the first 10 weeks, uh, they're pretty much going to be favored in all of those games. I mean, uh at home against Dallas I think they'll be maybe Dallas will be I don't know but like legitimately the Steelers are probably the best team versus everyone they're facing in the first ten, uh, no, nine games and then after that uh, Cleveland I don't think's looked that great so far they should be able to handle that Baltimore they've done very they've dominated Lamar Jackson so I mean the Steelers honestly probably are going to win this division and until Justin Fields shows that he can't play quarterback and he can't help the Steelers win games then I mean they're just they're not going to go away from him they're not going to rush 
Russ back because he's listed at QB1 on the depth chart. And Russ, he's been trying to play too. Same thing with Kenny Pickett, man. He was trying to play, and they decided to go with Mason Rudolph. So I, I just think Fields is looking like the future quarterback of this team. And once he starts throwing picks, taking unnecessary sacks, holding on to the ball, I mean, until that happens, I wouldn't expect to see Russell Wilson anytime soon. Russ is 35 to this point on a one-year deal. I know Russ wants to play a few more seasons, and we said this in the preseason, and even when Russ was healthy, is there's just no upside to him. We know who Russ is to this point. We know he's getting worse every single time he takes the field. He holds onto the ball. He can't throw across the middle of the field. And Fields has a big-time arm. He can use his legs, but when guys are in main coverage, working the sideline or working deep, Fields can make those throws. And George Pickens had a very quiet statistical game in this one. I think it was two for 29 at the top of my head. Yeah, two for 29. But again, there was you know, multiple plays you know, called back due to penalty. So that's got to get cleaned up on the offensive line, and they'll be in a great spot. Eventually, we're going to see a breakout game from the Steelers' offense. I mean, they're not going to have one touchdown in you know, the next two games like they did now. Like That's just not going to happen. Uh, I get the Steelers you know, going up against the Chargers is, is going to be... Uh, without question their toughest game and then at my indianapolis colts that should be a very fun game but uh, the steelers are just a team that nobody is going to want to play because of their defense because they're going to run the ball they're not going to shy away from it they ended up rushing the ball 36 times for 141 yards fields had eight of those carries uh, fields didn't use his legs too much you could tell he's trying to be a passer he's trying to be a quarterback he is looking down the field keeping his eyes open and then sometimes he'll break loose and try to pick up yards he did have a 16 yard rush but i mean seven carries outside of that for 11 yards uh fields i think is just doing a great job and he's only going to continue to get better and i have a crazy stat uh, that i want to show you guys and it is passer rating um in week two give me like five seconds to pull it up for you guys because this is something that's not getting talked about enough uh, just let me pull that up for you guys uh, okay so passer rating oh this is through week two it's not even just week two so passer rating through week two justin fields 94.4 aaron Rodgers 92.2 patrick mahomes 91.9 lamar jackson 86.5 uh, will that stay I have no idea, but all I know is that Justin Fields is doing a very good job for the Steelers. He's being efficient with the football. He's threatening the defense enough to where they can't just sit on the run because all of a sudden you play action and now you got George Pickens or you got Calvin Austin getting loose. Or Pat Fryermuth underneath had a couple of catches in this game. I think the Steelers are in a great spot. Uh, they're 2-0. I mean, only people on Twitter are going to find a way to hate on a 2-0 football team. They're going to be like, oh, the Steelers offense is 26. That's fine, man. This team is going to win a lot of games. It doesn't always have to be pretty. You don't need to have an offense that can score 30 to 34 a game in the NFL nowadays to win a Super Bowl. You just need a defense that can match up with the best of them. You need an offense that doesn't turn it over, that can run the football, can make the throws when needed. And George Pickens is good enough to where if the game's on the line, you need a completion. I mean, he's going to make that play and Fields is going to have no issue getting him the ball. Another thing, and then I'll end it on this, is that TJ Watt with his arm around Fields at halftime going back to the locker room. I don't know if I've seen TJ Watt do that with Kenny Pickett. So you can tell that Watt just believes in this quarterback and what he's going to do for the future of the Steelers. And you could be doing a lot worse than Justin Fields at quarterback. I mean, if Fields is so terrible, then why is Caleb Williams struggling for the Bears? I get he's a rookie, fine, two starts the offensive line all of a sudden you know Keenan Allen's out and the receiver the lack of depth at it doesn't look great so I mean Caleb was sacked seven times in that game against the Texans so I never thought Fields was the issue for the Bears I was one of the people that said they should keep Fields and I know that like whatever however you feel about Caleb but I mean the Steelers they got Fields for like a day three pick and it's looking like he's going to be the future quarterback of this team. And Arthur Smith is the perfect guy for Fields. I can't wait to see his development. Ryan Tannehill was a legit Pro Bowl quarterback with uh, Arthur Smith as his head coach. So now I'm looking at our offensive coordinator. Um, I think Rabel was still the head coach. But yeah, guys, that's all I got for you. Smash the like button, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one, man. Stay tuned. I got a Steelers channel that's going to be dropping Wednesday. Uh, sorry, Tuesday, September 17th. Guys, I'm going to be posting daily for you, man. Go Steelers. I'm a Colts fan, but I always root for you guys, man. Especially with Justin Fields.